What's up guys, Intellitech Mobile here, and this is the rarest version of the Xbox 360 that exists, at least to my knowledge. Now, when I say version, I'm specifically referring to the motherboard variant, and apologies to the uh, background noise. I live on a busy street and it's raining, so every time a car drives by, you can hear the sound of them rushing through the water. So, this is the Opus motherboard variant of the Xbox 360. Now, what do I mean by Opus, and what do I mean by motherboard revision? Well, first off, you can tell that we're talking about the original Xbox 360, but every version of the Xbox 360 has several different motherboard variants. So, referring to the original FAT model, which has the most variants, there are five variants in total. There's the launch model, which is the Xenon, and then there's that version with an HDMI port, which is called Zephyr. Then there is the Opus, the Falcon, and the Jasper. Now, there's a couple things to note about the Opus and what makes an Opus an Opus. So, that's a lot of Opus. So, if you look on the back of the Xbox 360. Now, first off, if your Xbox 360 does not have an HDMI port, then it is either an Opus or more likely a Xenon. Now, the reason that I can tell you that mine's an Opus, and you can check on your 360 as well, is if we look on this sticker right there, we can see this machine uses 14.2 amps of power. That's also what the power port looks like, but that is a bit mis misleading because the Xenon will have a pin right there, but a lot of times people will break that pin off and say they have an Opus. But if it runs on 14.2 amps and takes a Falcon power supply, that's how you know that it's an Opus if it doesn't have HDMI. If it does have HDMI and it's 14.2 amps, then it's just a Falcon. So the Opus is specifically rare out of all the variants because it was never offered for sale at retail. The only way you could get an Opus is if you had an original Xenon, which the Xenons are discernible from the Opus because the Xenons use 16 amps of power, as do the Zephyrs, and I'll show you that real quick. As we can see here, this Xbox 360 uses 16.5 amps. So this particular one is a Xenon. You can see that there, that little tab that I mentioned is missing. And this one has HDMI and it's 16.5 amps. So this one is a Zephyr. The version of this that doesn't have HDMI but still has 16.5 amps of power is the Xenon. So since this one is 14 amps and not 16, you can tell that this one is an Opus. Now, uh, also the Jasper units, if you look at the Jasper, the Jasper uses 12 amps of power. And that you can see right there, 12.1 amps. So this is a Jasper. So there's three main variants, the Xenon, the Falcon, and the Jasper, but there's also the different variants. The Zephyr is a Xenon with HDMI, and it also has a slightly larger heat sink on the inside. So that's why the Xenons are a little bit more reliable than the Z or that's why the Zephyrs are a little more reliable than the Xenons, despite there being very little internal changes. The Falcon and the Jaspers, as well as the Opus, since it basically is a Falcon, are the ones that you're going to want for actual usage because they're much less likely to have issues with the disk drive and with the scratching disks, as well as, most notably, they're less likely to get the Red Ring of Death. But I wouldn't recommend using an Opus for gameplay because, of course, there's no HDMI, so that reduces its versatility into today's day and age, unless, of course, you're getting one of these to play on a CRT where you're not going to use HDMI anyways. But for the most part, a Falcon is going to be a better choice and easier to find as well. But the interesting thing behind an Opus, I'm sorry, I know I kept saying that, but I'm only just now getting into that portion of it, but the backstory is important too, because you need to know if you actually have an Opus. Maybe you don't, but either way. So the reason why the Opus exists and why it's the rarest 360 motherboard variant is because of the fact that the Opus, like I mentioned, was never available at retail. The oh, oh Boot, are you okay? She scratched her ear a little bit too hard. Hi, honey. Hi, honey. Anyways, so the only way that you could get an Opus motherboard is if you had a Xenon motherboard and yours got the red ring of death and you sent it in as part of Microsoft's extended warranty coverage. And if you sent it in after Microsoft stopped manufacturing the Xenon and ran out of stock, 
they would give you back an Opus, because for some reason Microsoft was persistent on giving you a machine without HDMI. Why they didn't just give you a Falcon at that point, I don't know, but they specifically engineered the Opus to be a Falcon without HDMI, so that way you can get uh, the same uselessness of your previous console and you don't get upgraded. Um, now, of course, there is no HDMI list variant of the Jasper, because by that time, most of the Red Ring of Death warranties had ran out, and I assume that Microsoft at that point would have just given you a console with HDMI. So, that's why that only the Xenon and the Falcon have variants with and without HDMI. The Jasper always has HDMI, no matter what variant it is. If it's a Jasper, it has HDMI. So... That is one thing. If you're if you're somehow able to look at the power port, but you're not able to look at the AV port for some reason, I don't know, maybe listing photos on eBay or something, then um, know that the Jaspers always have HDMI. So if you're worried about getting a 360 without HDMI, but you still want a fat, then in general the Jasper is the way to go because it's the newest, most refined variant. But the Falcons are still pretty good, and the Opus is essentially the same as a Falcon, but you don't get HDMI. So, sorry if I'm repeating myself, but that's the main story behind how the Opus exists. So, this particular machine was manufactured in 2008, and we can see right there, So that which was around the time that the Falcons were also manufactured, because they were both manufactured at the same time. So, this one's from September of 2008. So, this one conveniently was manufactured right before the Jaspers existed. So because the Jaspers were introduced like around late 2008, early 2009. The Falcons were introduced in uh, mid to late 2007. The Zephyrs were introduced in early 2007 with the Halo 3 edition as well as the Elite. This particular Halo 3 edition is a launch Halo Elite, or Halo 3 edition that is a Zephyr. So that's how you know that. And I also have another Halo 3, which is also a Zephyr. They did make Falcon versions of the Halo 3 console. I did own one at one point, but I had to send it back because of that disk drive issues. So, yeah, that's just a quick little video on discussing the Opus model of the Xbox 360, the Opus motherboard variant. It's basically Cliff Notes version. It's a Falcon without HDMI that was only given to people who sent in Xenons as part of the Red Ring of Death warranty and where their original system couldn't be fixed and they replaced the console uh, after they ran out of Xenon. So it's a very, it's a very small uh, time frame and market where these actually got out there. And there was no point where you could retail buy an Opus unless, of course, someone had one that got, they got back from Microsoft and then sold it on. But as far as retail, the Opus never existed. So that's why it's the rarest version of the Xbox 360 because it never saw retail availability and was only given as trade-ins directly from Microsoft after your original Xenon console was sent in and replaced. So that's pretty much that. As far as the significance of an Opus, these aren't really worth any more than a Falcon. In fact, usually they're going to be cheaper than a Falcon because they don't have HDMI. If you're buying one on eBay, maybe someone will price it a bit more if they know it's a rare unit, but there's no real value there. Uh, I see no reason to buy one of these over a Falcon, but it is a, a cool little thing where it's like, hey, this is a rare version that shouldn't exist, and that's what makes it cool, I guess. Uh, I actually bought this because I figured, well, I want a second 360 for my uh, bedroom, so I'm not having to cart my main console around, and I figured this would do because I don't really care if it's component, and I specifically saw this at a local store. And I thought I'd do that. And then I remembered that my that my brand new TV that I just got from my, bed, my bedroom doesn't have component. It only has composite and HDMI. And obviously composite is not going to be all that, uh, all that desirable. So you can see how using a component only 360 is a bit problematic in today's day and age. But you can use VGA and you can use components, so you can get HD out of one of these even without an HDMI cable. And there are some companies out there that do make adapters that you can plug into the AV port and give you HDMI, but they're usually really expensive and they're kind of pointless because they're more expensive than normal cables. And at that point, you might as well just have paid the difference in the first place and gotten a console with HDMI, especially because, again, here's a Falcon 
wait, is this a Falcon? Yeah, this is a Falcon. So this one is the same 14.2 amps, but this one has HDMI. So you can see that the Falcon and the Opus are identical, except for the HDMI port or lack thereof. So that's pretty much that. So I don't know if there really is a true reason for getting one of these. I mean, there isn't. It's just a collectible thing. And of course, any of these that you get are going to be, to my knowledge, I don't believe they made any Opuses that were arcade models. I believe every Opus was a pro with the silver disc tray, but obviously core models were Xenons as well. So I've never seen an Opus with a white disc tray as an arcade model, but if you have an Opus that's a white arcade... Boot. Jesus. But if you have an Opus that is a white arcade model, then definitely let me know. And I'd love to see what it looks like. I assume, Well, I guess not what it looks like. But if you have one, let me know. Because presumably, if they were replacing Pro Model 360s with, with Opuses from Xenons, then there were obviously Xenon core systems. So I'm wondering if those were turned into Opuses as well. Uh, or if you sent in a core 360 and got an opus back if the if you would just get an opus with a silver disc tray I don't know that would be interesting to note Because I've only ever seen opuses as pro models with the silver disc tray and And this isn't an arcade model. There's no internal memory. So it is a pro model So I'm not sure about that. I would love to hear any insight um, So yeah, that'd be pretty interesting. So that's basically just a quick rundown and rambling on the Xbox 360 Opus, which is the first Opus that I've ever owned, and I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it because I paid a good, I paid like, you know, 50, 60 bucks for this, and the sticker says 75, but I, because it had a 120 gig hard drive on it that obviously the previous owner had added to it, I just got the console itself because I already had cables, controller, and I didn't need a hard drive, so I got this for 60 bucks, but... I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it because the disc tray has the open tray error and it's very intermittent and I, and it also gets stuck sometimes, but more importantly, it doesn't read a lot. So uh, I'm unsure about that. The warranty seal, to my knowledge, is intact. Let me pull off the faceplate. So actually, uh, it looks like it was cut, but I'm not quite sure. Trying to see if there's... No, yeah, it looks like someone did open this at one point. So, yeah, because this, this warranty seal is intact, or is not intact. So, although whoever did open this, they did a good job because there's no wear on these clips. Usually these are all tore up whenever people get in here. But, yeah, so that's pretty much that. This is the rarest... Motherboard variants of the Xbox 360. Also, for some reason, the O on the underside is, like, pressed in. I'm not sure what that's all about, but that's not the first time I've seen that. So, yeah. Just, a, uh, It's basically just a crappier Falcon with no HDMI. And that's, that's all there is to it. I'll go ahead and plug this in real quick. Again, there's not much to show, but I will still plug it in in case you want to see it. One other interesting thing that I like to mention that nobody has ever mentioned about the Opuses is that, okay, I didn't mean to do that, but if you notice, I don't have the AV cables plugged in, and normally it, on the Xenons, if you have a Xenon console and you plug it in and you don't plug anything into the AV port, you will get four flashing red lights to show you that the AV cables are not plugged in. The Opus doesn't do that, which is very fascinating. So some people have mentioned that HDMI list 360s show the four red light error code whenever your AV cables are not plugged in. Turns out that is only applicable to the Xenons. The Opuses, presumably because the Falcons are, you know, like what's essentially underneath and the Falcons don't do that because the Falcons have HDMI, but the Zephyrs, don't, I, I don't know. So for whatever reason, you do not get a red ring if you plug it in without AV cables, despite the fact that the Xenon does. So even though there's no HDMI port, you do not get a four red light error code if the AV cables are not plugged in. It just it just doesn't it just simply doesn't start. That's all it does. Basically just like every modern Xbox. And of course it's a Falcon, so it takes a Falcon power supply. So we are going to grab 
our AV cables component and plug it in the back. And this should start up. So we can see right there, Xbox 360. I'm not going to bother capturing footage or anything like that because that's, uh, you know, all there is to it. If these cars would stop speeding by, you could probably hear how quiet the Opus really is. It seems like it's a little bit quieter than the Xenons, but I could be wrong about that. Boots. 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 Come here. Oh, okay. We can also see that it says in the display settings to connect an Xbox 360 HD AV cable to configure high definition display modes. I but I don't think that's any different than the other consoles. I believe the new dashboard on all the consoles says to do that and doesn't mention HDMI. So I don't think that's the same, but I could be wrong. I think I said that wrong. So I do think that is the same, but I could be wrong. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed my overview video on the Xbox 360 Opus motherboard. If you have any questions or anything like that, then be sure to let me know. And... Yeah, subscribe to IntelliTech Mobile if you want to see more videos like this one. Anyways, this is IntelliTech Mobile signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace.